So we're going to talk more about fire construction afterwards, <laughs> but I'm going to show you some loads of different methods of fire lighting. And what I'll do is if I pass them, I'll pass them this way round, and then everybody can have a look. You can have a go with them. I've got loads of stuff here that you guys are going to play with, but I've got one or two kind of random methods of fire lighting that, um, that you can just have a look at. I've got, I've got loads of them, I've just got a couple. But we're going to look at today specifically, we're going to look at flint and steel and ferrocene rods. Okay, we could look at matches and lighters, but I feel like that's a little bit like sucking eggs. If you can't light a fire with a match or a lighter, we've got bigger problems than I realised. Yeah? But it is always worth remembering that there's nothing wrong with having one in your pocket at all times. It's a good bit of kit. Yeah? And it's once we're getting away from that, once again, that idea of like, oh, but I'm in the wilderness, I must rub two sticks together. Why? Mm. I lit this fire this morning with fire lighters from Tesco's. Not fannying around rubbing two sticks together. I've got things to do. Yeah, it's calorie calorie burning. I'm not going to do that. Why wouldn't I use a lighter? No one's coming up to you. The bushcraft gods are not coming up to you going, oh, no, no good is it? You use a lighter. Well, I don't care. I'm warm now. Yeah. So we've got to get out of that mindset of like, you know, whatever works. A lighter, it works. The only downside is it runs out eventually. But they make, they're good fun when they run out and you throw them in the fire and they go boom. Okay, so one tool that we will look at that you've probably seen before, if for those who have or haven't, is a ferrocene rod. Seen these before? Okay, fire striker. You've seen one before, have you? Oh, excellent. Well, you can teach this and I'm going to go for a coffee. No, I'm only joking. Um, so this is a mixture of iron and cerium in the rod and then on the here it's got a, just a piece of metal that's burred on one side. That's quite important, the burr on one side, because if you use the wrong side it won't work. And all you're doing is scratching sparks off the rod, yeah? That's pieces of that metal coming off that rod there, okay? They will run out, but that's going to take a long time. And you can get them this small, we obviously, we have them small because I teach ones this small how to light fires, future pyromaniacs, so they're small for their hands. But you can get them that thick, the rods that thick, so they'll last forever. It's a bit extreme, but you know, it is what it is. Okay? So again, it's called a ferrocean rod. They come in lots of different names. People call them fire flashes, fire steels. They're getting really hard to come by because of the COVID Brexit thing. The supplies of them is getting quite tough. Um, so they're quite hard to come by now. Um, this is made by a Swedish company called Light My Fire. Um, it, they are cracking. Uh, if you're going to buy a decent one, then you need to buy from Light My Fire. The other one I would recommend, because it's worth noting, they're not all made equal. It all depends on the this percentage mix of iron and cerium. So some, if they've got too much iron in them, they'll be too hard, you won't get sparks on them. Too much cerium, they'll be really soft and run out really quickly. Light my fire really good. The only other one that I've been like, oh my god, this is amazing, is one from a company called Woodlaw, which is Ray Mears' personal company. Um, he's got a shop on his website, and the ones that come from his website are worth every penny. They are the best ferrocene rods I've ever used. They sh they're fire steels. If you type in fire steels, you'll get them. You can look on the bushcraft <laughs> store. Um, <laughs> most army surplus stores have them. Um, you get the old RAF ones that come in a block of magnesium, so there's ferrocene on one side and a block of magnesium on the other. Those are okay, but they're quite difficult to use. Um, they're, they're a real pain in the backside. These really good bits of kit, weigh nothing, live in your pocket, you know. How does it work again? So it's just, you're, gonna, you're, gonna get, you're gonna light your fires with these today, but um, just strikes there. So what you would do is you take a piece of cotton wool or something fibrous that will light, so um, tumble dry lint, I don't know, um, you can use but, um, wood shavings, something like that. It will drop a decent spark into it and you just drop, drop some sparks straight in. Oh, that's nice and easy. Yeah? yeah. Makes sense? Can I just want one? There we go. You can have a look at my one. There you go. Let's have a look. I'll tell you in a sec. You need a better striker, I'll tell you that much. It's a shame if I'd known that I'd have bought you one. So, like my fire, this company here, I had a chat actually with the, um, with the, the guy, so it's, run by a, a, it's a family business, a Swedish company, and I was chatting with his brother, so the parents died and left the company to the brother and the, the sister, um, 
and she's in charge of product development mm. and he's in charge of kind of marketing and everything <coughs> like that. And I was having a chat with them like at the back. There you ready? Sides. Oh, dog. Huh. Um, I was having a chat with him and they used to do, Ooh, it was just a sheet of metal, just a little bit like this one, but it was so sharp. It was amazing. And then she changed them and they said that he said that they nearly fell out. Because he was like, don't change it, everybody loves these. And I was talking to him and I was like, why did they change them? And he was like, I know, I know. I told them not to change them because they're really good. So what I did then was I bought all I, I bought all of the ones I could find and just took all of the metal pieces off. So I've got a little box full of them. I'm like, they have it mine. <laughs> So you put Anybody else? Set them back. The big ones are the bigger version. Yeah, chemicals on your one. Yeah, chemicals. 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 Yeah
negative neutrons in your hair, it pulls all the water off the match. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They're not. They're not a strike anywhere matches. Otherwise, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> These matches have got a bit wet. This box is wet. But yeah, you see, you can, you can use your uh, you can use your hair. They're all a bit soaked. But yeah, so that's matches. If anyone wants to have a play with those, they can do. Um, before we do flint and steel, let's have a look at chemicals. So let me just grab a disc. So there are lots of different chemicals that we can mix together. Some you can find in the home. Um, sugar is always a, an active ingredient. In fire lighting, it's the active ingredient in most explosives, sugar. Fertilizer and sugar are the main ingredients in napalm. Um, any kind of acid and mixing with sugar is always a good one. So here I've got some potassium permanganate, which you can get, it's quite hard to get hold of these days, but it's, it used to be used to treat athlete's foot. It's purple. Yeah, yeah. If I, um, I'll show you it's purple. It looks black, I know. But, um, Look brown. Mm -hmm. I, uh... yeah. So where would you get that, James? Right? My wife steals it from work. No, she doesn't. I buy it. Um, so it's purple. Yeah. Where would you buy it? You can that? get it from the. You can get it online. I literally oh, buy yeah. bags of it off Amazon. Yeah, but it's used traditionally. It's used to treat um, athletes' foot. The, uh, in veterinary practice, they use it to treat wounds because you just need a small drop of it in some water, and it creates water in a. Um, in a country where you're maybe like worried about things like Delhi Valley, so the water's not particularly clean, you can, um, I've done it before when I've been in like uh, third world countries, you fill up your sink with water and you drop just a small amount of potassium permanganate in the water and you can wash all your food in that water then. Um, it just makes it a bit safer. But yeah, so then all we're going to do is going to add some sugar, some vegetable glycerine. Pomanganate. So just sugar, glycerine, potassium, potassium permanganate. Permanganate. Okay, cheers. Yeah, you can use um, you can use uh, antifreeze for your car that's got a lot of glycerine in it. Um, you can see it reacting now. You can see it changing colour. It's moving around. Look. And then it do, this is very much temperature depending. So during the summer. You do it, well, at least yes, it goes look, straight away, and look. in the winter you sat there yeah. for ages. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sugar and basically <laughs> potassium is a type of acid. So mixing sugar and acid tend to, tends to create some kind of explosion. dissolve sugar and water. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, it's just li yeah, it's liquid, it's liquefied sugar. I mean, if you've got, you can actually take sugar that you put yeah. in your teas and just and mix it. them together, yeah. add a bit of water just to kind of get them really moving around. And yeah, I've done that before. Like, just and you just, just have to be careful because as you're mixing it round <laughs> and you keep it moving, nice. eventually it will go. So as soon as it goes, you need to get out of the way. Any yeah? acid? Any uh, not any acid, but most acids. You've got to do a bit of science, really. Uh, Sorry, James. Two product. These are potassium. If I go, I'm going to do it one more time, and then I'll pass the jar around. Do not get this stuff on your skin if you look at it. It will burn your skin. Wow. Um, it, but not bad, not like, oh my god, I'm on fire, but like it will, your skin will go black, it will kill the cells on your skin. It's like using a caustic but pencil. You can ingest it, you can't you can ingest it but on tiny quantities. Fire. Like the amount I would put in a bucket of water to clean, to clean, uh, to clean a load of food, right. or to do any athlete's foot is like that much right. in like six or eight liters of water. If you did put too much in it, it would just burn your skin. You would know, you'd be like, oh, it's getting really itchy, right. this is uncomfortable. Yeah. I'll pass it around so you can have a look because I'm also going to show you some magnesium as well. Well, you did get that. Yeah. It, just keep putting water so on it. Yeah, just wash it off. Acid. And that's what we recommend in like first aid. If you get any kind of chemical that's a burning type chemical, you get water on it and you wash it away from you. Yeah, away from you. So if it's on your hand, keep your hand down and wash it down. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to. You're washing it down your arm or whatever. Same with eyes. You know, if you've got acid in your eye, don't wash the eye with that so it washes it all into the other eye. That kind of thing. I'll pass that around so you can have a look. And what's the other thing? That uh, so this is just vegetable glycerine. glycerine. This literally comes oh, from the cake baking aisle in Sainsbury's. Glycerine. <laughs> glycerine. It's just sugar. Glycerine is just Are another name for sugar. Oh no, I'm going to be done this. It's fine. Soda panels. Why work for what? Is it? Yeah. Glycol. Similar. Yeah, it would do the same job. Glycol, yeah? Yeah, it would do the same job. Yeah. 
Then we can also we can add magnesium to the process. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, really bright. You can light magnesium even when it's wet, and you can light it with a striker. Where's my my one? There it is. You just have to be careful because it spits like hell. <coughs> but it burns ridiculously hot. So I can take some. So you need to put the wood on it. Yeah, you need to get all you would. These would be what we would class as um, starters. You wouldn't light your fire with this. This would be something like I've got a load of dried grass that's just a little bit too wet to start the fire with, so I could use this. But you need to use the ferrocene rod in a slightly different way. So you're making shavings there, right? Yeah, there you go. Once it goes, it goes. Yeah, and that's going to be burning quite hot for quite a long time because also it melts and it becomes a ball of molten metal then, so it'll keep the heat. That you make sparklers today? Yes, it's the same chemical. Yeah. So that'll be really, really hot. So if I need to get some, I mean, you could light a fire that way. If you had some good processed wood, you'd split some wood down, you'd some kindling, you could build a fire off that, no problem. That's just pure. That's just pure magnesium shavings. Okay. Really easy to get hold of. I asked the missus for some because I'd run out and so literally like two kilos turned up on the front door the next day. Yeah. That's just like having a hot cold in it really, is it? Yeah, I mean look look how you can see you can see how hot that is. Yeah, that is gonna give you a good base to get some sticks over or something like that and start fire. Would you use this as your first port of court or the No I Yeah You know what you're doing, this one's all you need. Cool. So, we're going to be getting, uh, so that's another one that you can look at. <laughs> these are just things that you don't necessarily have to have with you, yeah. but it's worth knowing these things because if you ever stumble across them, you're like, oh, actually, I can use this instead of that, or whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's that MacGyver attitude of knowing all the stuff. So when it's when it turns up in your lap, you can go, that's not useless. I can use that. Yeah. Yes, there might not be any fuel in the car, but I can use the car battery to do something. You know, that kind of thing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you can use car windows to sharpen knives if you know what you're doing. Cool. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Right, flint and steel, my favourite method of fire lighting ever. Because it humbles people to hell. Cool. So our oldest, the oldest method of fire lighting we're aware of, and we think this, this predates anything, is smashing rocks together. <laughs> The rock they would have used, which I'm going to pass round, and I know how many I've got, so don't be thinking about nicking it, because these are like prized possessions of mine. Because <laughs> they are so hard to find now. This is iron parietes, <laughs> naturally occurring iron nodules. I'm going to pass them round so you can have a look. They are beautiful to look at. They, um, uh, they turn up in little balls like this, and they are dense. That is heavy. Or they turn up in, um, in like kind of rods. Which people are uh, people used to think in old folklore that they were where lightning bolts had struck the ground because when you look at the pattern inside, they they have this beautiful. I mean, some they're rusting up now because I've had them for so long. But these beautiful patterns there, yeah. Which, as as your name would suggest, parietes is like the same family as false gold, yeah. Okay, so I'll pass those round so you can have a look. Um, I stole those. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not stealing if you steal from the thief, is it? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. We find that they, they, are, there are, they, um, they appear on a few beaches in this country, and those who know don't tell anybody else. It is a closely guarded secret where they find them. Closely guarded secret. Do you know any? A lot, no, I don't. A lot of the beaches they're found on as well, they're like um, protected beaches, you're not allowed on them. I used to collect them when I was a child because they looked like gold. Yeah, it's like gold, yeah. <laughs> and same job. So our ancestors would have smashed that just, just together with flint <laughs> and it makes the dullest <laughs> sparks ever and it's yeah, so it's hard to light fire that yeah. way. So hard. But it is possible. You would need some other ingredients, which is flint and steel. You need this; it's a four-ingredient process. Um, you can use a horse a fungus called a horse hoof fungus that grows on certain trees, and you take that and you scrape it into a powder, and it, um, it will it will collect the spark quite nicely. But this is another method of fire lighting, which is actually probably 
one of the longest using. We were still using this as a common method of firelighting in the Victorian period. It was common for newlywed couples in the Victorian era to be given a flint and steel as a wedding gift. Um, because it was the, how they lit their fires in their homes. It's very, very simple. They come in all different funky patterns. Um, we always say to the kids, looks like a little moustache. Do you want to see what you'd look like with a moustache? Should we try? Do we see what daddy would look like? Oh yes. Do you think he's an up? Or is he a down? I think he's an up. Daddy's definitely an up. Look at that. Definitely an up. So, they come in all the different shapes of pants. I've got my one over there somewhere, which is the metal has been made and it looks like a dragon. So if there, you can you can get some cool bits of kit. Those bits of kit, I know it seems like a bit pointless, but it's morale boosting. Sarah's a kid, we must have tried to light fires with like normal stones. Striking, it looks like a dragon, <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, but this is one of my favourite methods of firelight. So this area here, we get loads of it. I mean, it literally comes out of the farmer's fields in these huge, great big nodules. It's really easy to come by. It doesn't occur up north so much, but we know their ancestors, it was actually a traded product. So there would have been people who made a, made a living six and a half thousand years ago, shifting bits of flint up north and trading it for other bits and pieces because it was a valuable commodity. When we talk about the Stone Age, this is the stone that we're referring to. Flint is, it is like nature's Swiss army knife. It's incredible. So all we do is we take a flat edge, I'm going to use this flat edge here, and a piece of steel. We hold the steel nice and gently, we hold the flint nice and hard, and we just strike past. Yeah? Like so. <laughs> Alright, make sense? That is pieces of steel coming off this. Yeah? Because the flint is harder than the steel. Okay? Um, it's a, like I said, it's a I'm going to let you all have a play, but um, I haven't got enough for everybody to have a go at the second stage, but I'll show you how it works. So I'm going to use this. This is, um, this is just jute. Um, so you know jute string that you get for like gardening? Yeah? I have the, the monotonous task of sitting there and unstringing it and then pulling it apart. But the reason we use this for demonstrations is it doesn't smoke as much as like grass does. So you can see what's going on. Okay. Then you need another process, which actually you're all going to have a little takeaway from today, um, which is char cloth. Okay, because I'm going to show you how to make char cloth, and then I'm going to give you a little pot that you can all take away and make your own char cloth with, because you know, hey, I'm just such a generous guy. Actually, I had a load of them in my garage, and I was like, I want them gone. They can all have it. Um, so char cloth is just burnt material that's burnt without the presence of oxygen. So it's like baked material. It's exactly the same as charcoal, it's the cloth version. Once again, if the poo hits the fan, there's gonna be plenty of this to be made. You can make this out of t-shirts, tea towels. I'll tell you what is really good because they're useless in first aid kits, triangular bandages. They are the best material to make. I've got a box full of them because I just bought hundreds of my Amazon because they're so good for making. Can you say what this is called? I, um, iron parietes. Iron parietes. Iron so what it does is it catch, it will catch a spark and hold a spark really, really well. So if I take <coughs> my piece. What did I put it? It's down here. Look. So what I do is I take. Where's my little nest? I'm going to make myself a little nest. Fire is all about preparation. So make a little nest. You can make this out of dried grass, in a bark of certain things, that kind of stuff. Just something that's quite fibrous. Put that down there. My little nest. Put my char cloth right on the edge of my flint and steel <laughs> and then just drop a spark on it. Sometimes easier said than done. <laughs> this is not a particularly good piece of flint meat to get a hammer, a sharper piece. There we go, straight away. It wasn't just, it wasn't a very good piece of it. See it glowing? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Drops that straight in there. It's good to take a breath sometimes, otherwise you get a bit lightheaded. You're like, oh! Okay. Wow, very good. Hey. There you go. 
Yeah. Makes sense. So you can do that with long grass, anything like that. And fire is all about preparation. So if you're travelling somewhere, that might be a job of you walking along and going, there's a bit of dry grass there, up into your, t into your jacket, a bit of dry grass there. Um, I collect, you know those silicone packets that you get whenever you buy anything? I've got thousands of them because I keep them in a bag and then if I'm in that scenario, I keep them in a little dry bag and all I do is I collect my material and stuff it in that dry bag and the silicone <coughs> packets will absorb all the moisture from it. And then, yes, yeah, so it's just another way of using modern materials yeah. to do it. The other way of doing it is paper bags. It's another good one, putting your, putting your fibrous material in a paper bag, just put it in a pocket, you know, like under your, in, your, in your belly area, nice and warm, something like that. And just use your body heat to dry and the paper bag will pull the moisture out of the grass. These are things that were always prepared, yeah? Our ancestors did not run around lighting fires by rubbing two sticks together wherever they went. They actually carried fire. They carried it with them because it was not calorie efficient to be rubbing two sticks together every time you need to stop and make a fire. What they would be using is uh, a fungus like this. Actually, I've got a better piece in here. So this is a really common occurring fungus. It's one of my favorites because the Latin name is just beautiful. Um, so this is known as King Alfred's cake. Also known as Daldinia concentrica. That's such a great Latin name. I love that. It's so cool. Um, the reason for that is is because if I look at a small example, it's got loads of concentric rings. So that's where the Latin comes from. I'll pass this one round. You what's, can't. What's the other name for it? Something cake. King Alfred's cake. Oh, King Alfred's the, cake. the legend is obviously I don't know if anybody knows the legend. Like yeah. King Alfred looking after. He was he was Alfred in hiding, told to look after the cakes. Fell asleep, and then woke up and he let the cakes go burn, and they look like this grows on dead ash trees. We have got an abundance of it in this woodland. Like, literally, I've got it coming out of my ears. Um, it's, uh, this is the biggest one I've ever found, so nobody's allowed to touch it, because it's one, another one of my prized possessions. <laughs> you have to be careful with it, though. Um, you have to dry it carefully. If it's wet, and you just take it indoors, it will it will spore and just explode in your wherever it is, your kitchen, and then you just cover your house yeah. in spores. So, so, yeah, so you have to dry it quite carefully. But what it does, we can use it as a coal extender, <coughs> So if you've only got a little bit of char cloth, I could put that into that nest with that and it'll take the ember and it will extend the coal. Or what our ancestors would have done, and that's what I've got my jar for, is they would have taken this and used the fire that they were leaving behind to just get it, get it burning. Like that. Like a coal. Yeah. It smells beautiful. Yeah, I love the smell. Mm. Yeah? Like that. Pass it around so you can all see. Just a dried mushroom. Yeah, just a dried mushroom. <laughs> well, technically it's a fungus. Yes. So did you say this is what they would carry around with? So what they would have done then is wrap that in some moss, then in a birch bark container and just like a little handbag off they went and then when they got to wherever they wanted to be they'd have unpacked it <laughs> added it to some dried material and and you know probably picked up a couple throughout the day in their pockets or whatever added to dry and it was a it was an ongoing process the same as they ever if they ever did use the bow drill method to light fire so rubbing two sticks together um it wouldn't have been something that they made as they went along <coughs> they would have had a set <coughs> and they would have had another set or a couple of sets drying so a couple of spindles drying so after they had the fire they'd have buried them under the coals drying that wood out so when their one if their one set got wet or it ran out because the wood obviously wears away as you use it they've had another set ready to go because it's just this you know you don't know whether you're going to find the right materials wherever you are mm. so you would just take that with you as a hot coal as a hot coal they would have carried oh, right, it right. together yeah i have to put it in this jar here because um I like I, I tried not to waste them so How much. But the jar, obviously, for? the only way to put them out is either soak them or starve them. Mm. So yeah. the jar starves them of oxygen. Right. How long will it stay hot for? Oh, uh, it depends how long it lasts. The bigger That's... it is, the longer it lasts. But yeah. it will burn and burn and burn and burn. So a piece like that. Mm. Hey. A piece like that. Yeah, a piece like that. Either a couple of hours. Right. Yeah. As long as you're not blowing on it, it will just smolder away. Yeah, wrapped in some moss, it'll just smolder away. 
wrapped hot. I mean, this jar's got hot. So they would have wrapped it in moss and then maybe put it in a birch bark container that they'd made, something like that, and then that would have just that would have kept it just fine. Yeah. Birch doesn't burn that. Birch burns beautifully well, but the moss is what's stopping it from igniting. Right. Yeah, birch burns wonderfully. Yeah. But you have to know the, what part of the birch to burn. So birch is a fire tree. Every ancient culture had stories about the birch tree. And wherever birch trees grew, we thrived. Because they're such a wonderful tree. In the spring, you can tap the birch for its sap. Great winter tonic. Full of vitamin C and sugar. So after the deprived winter months, um, you, could, uh, you could use that to you know, get sugar levels up, vitamin C levels up. The bark that comes off it, <coughs> like paper, mm. yeah, the bark that comes off it's like paper, burns incredibly well. Like well, that will take a spark, a decent spark, and it will burn. It's lethal when it burns though, it's so hot and it sticks like glue. You don't want to touch mm. it. Um, uh, and just, it's prevalent, but you've got to know the right bits. It's a real shame because I see a lot of people, um, you see a lot of birch trees and people have cut like chunks of the bark out. So you see the white tree and there's like a huge chunk of the white missing. That's, you're picking the wrong bark. If you're getting down to the cambium layer, the green bit, the, 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 the veins and arteries of the tree, you've got the wrong bit. The, the birch bark, the birch tree will give up the bits it, you can burn. It's the way the tree dissipates heat. So the reason the bark peels off is because the tree is trying to expel heat. It's stripping layers off. So you just go along and just peel those layers off. If you have to take a knife to it, you've got the wrong bit and you're killing the tree. So, oh wow. Yeah. But yeah, we have quite thin birch bark in this country. Um, the colder countries have quite thick birch bark. So um, our ancestors would have had quite thick bark to play with and you can make containers out of it, boxes. They used to make bloody canoes out of it. It's incredible stuff. But it has to grow in a cold environment. Because a cold environment, the tree grows, it grows slower. So the bark is thicker. Whereas in our temperate environments, the bark is quite thin and paper-like because it's warm and the tree can grow it's not not under any threat but birch trees are what we call a pioneer species so they grow small they grow fast they don't live very long and then they normally are the precursor to a forest growing so you'll find them dead and around the edges of the forest normally because then they they populate the area for the other trees they force all the long-standing trees elm oak beech ash they force those trees to grow up and grow big they don't grow very big birch trees, but they're beautiful trees. Beautiful trees. Mm. Does anybody want to have a go at trying making some sparks with some flint and steel? You want to have a go? Yeah. Come and get some flint then. <laughs> if you want to have a go. And then there's a steel here. Have a go. There's some steels there. I've only got seven, I think. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Don't see what I'm doing. Oh, there we go. Go on, Steve. You can do it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Good, Adam, give it a go. To make sure that yeah, there you go. Fire starter. Yeah, didn't it? <laughs> Here. So, hold that. So you need a, a parallel edge. Uh -huh. Right, so hold that there. Hold this in the middle. Uh -huh. Yeah? And it's coming oh. up and it's past. It's scraping past. There you go. Thank you. Oh. So you can make charcoal. This is how we make charcoal. In the little Ow. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Just check it. Uh, what is it? The flint. Yeah, just check it. Yeah. I've cut myself. Just go on one and drop one down. Triangular bandages. I'm going to take that material. I'm just going to fold it up. And I've got one of these little tins. You can use a... Quality Streets tin, obviously not a plastic one, that's not going to work, um, but like a metal tin, anything, and I've punched a hole in the top here, yeah, because you need to have space for the oxygen and the moisture to escape, yeah? Then we take that out there like that, and we just plonk that straight in there. Yeah, but once again, this is what I was saying, it's these processes are like, you are constantly preparing what happens next. Right, okay, I'm running low on char cloth. While I'm sat around the fire tonight, I need to restock my pot. Yeah? Um, and what is it for, the char cloth? So the, well, that's what we use to catch a spark. <coughs> that's what we use to catch a spark to then ignite. For those who didn't see it, this is my fire lighting kit if you wanted to see it. 
So inside, I have a little um, plastic bag that I keep some charcoal in here, keeps the moisture away. Um, then I've got my teeny tiny little dragon striker. That's my striker there. Okay, and then a couple of pieces of lethally, lethally sharp flint. Like that would cut, that would cut your skin. That's nasty stuff. Um, and then, which will take a nice little spark. Yeah, really doesn't need very much at all. And then a couple of bits of fat wood. So this is wood that you find on the inside of pine trees, normally where the branches are. And I think you can smell this one too much. It's quite old, but if we split some open later on, you'll be able to smell it. And then a couple of half uh, cut up pieces of that jute string that I was telling you about. Yeah, so to make that fiber, all I do is I just unravel the jute string like that, pull it apart. And that's how I make that fiber. Yeah, I could find some, but once again, I've got like just in case kind of stuff in the pot. And that all lives in a little pot um, in this bag that was given to me by a Sami woman when I was in Finland. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so it's made of reindeer skin. Beautifully soft. Beautifully oh. soft. Yeah. This one here, this is deer skin. <laughs> A deer died for it. <laughs> Why is it the size? It's like the shape of a kidney or something. Yeah, that's just how I made it. I had a bit, I had a bit spare, so I just made a pouch. Just used the kidney as a template. Yeah, I used, I used, I used, the, uh, I used the, the kidney as a template. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, yeah. Oh, like a grope thing. <laughs> Just because one's cough, cloth and coal is wood. So that's not. Yeah, that's not making charcoal. It's not edible. No, it's just deer. You can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. So that's how they make charcoal then? It's just like uh, charcoal is, yeah, charcoal is made on a big, so they have, char ch charcoal is awesome, I love making charcoal, but it's a giant drum with four chimneys coming out of it. You fill it to the brim full of sticks and seal the drum, so you put a big lid on it, um, and then you pack all of the chimneys, no you don't, sorry, wrong way around, you put the chimneys on, and then you start a fire in the drum, so everything's burning. And then when the smoke goes from being white to clear, so that means you put smoke like this, that gray smoke, that's moisture. That's not smoke, it's moisture in the smoke. When it goes white or clear, that means the moisture's gone. You take the chimneys off and you seal the holes. And then that's, that basically continues the burning process, but the fire will burn all the oxygen off. So then you get charcoal. Yeah, and you have to be with it. It's like a 24 hour process and you have to, you have to sleep with it. You basically pitch a tent next to your charcoal burner and you, you, wait, you have to be with it. Because you don't know when the fire is going to turn. You don't know when the, when the moisture will be gone. So you have to be there at all times to make sure it happens. And then... You can coal. charge coal itself. Coal. That's fossilized yeah. wood. wood yeah. That's fossilized wood. So can you use that charcoal for water for, for, for water as well? Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's try and take this out. I may to rush the process, but you because the risk now is that if I open that up and it gets exposed to oxygen, it'll burst into flames because it's exposed to the oxygen. But I'm gonna open it up anyway so you can have a look. I normally sit here for like a day just chopping this stuff up and rolling it. Because I've got nothing else to do, because hey, who needs friends? <laughs> um, so all we do. That's right, that's fine, that's actually fine. Um, so what I do is I normally fold it like that and then I roll it up, like so. And I will fill the tin with little rolls, okay, yeah, yeah. which you can see actually, if you look in the tin, you'll see that those bits of char cloth are all like little rolls of char cloth, uh, mm. material. So I'll roll it up and I'll fill, I mean, I have a bigger tin that I do this with, I have a biscuit tin that I do this with and I'll fill it to the brim. Um, I'll put that in there. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And you got like a little hole pierced in it. Yeah, just a little hole pierced to let the oxygen come out. And all it's got in it is that bit of bandage. Yeah, there, you just saw it. Yeah, I just put that little, just put a little bit of bandage in there. And then I just plonk that in the embers. Don't want to put it in the flames because I don't want the risk of any flames getting into the hole and setting fire to it. So I'm just, I'm just superheating it. Is basically what I'm doing. Okay. There is a. Leave it in there for. Just until it, you'll see in a second what will happen, and then you will know. So there is a load of these, those tins there, which I've put some char cloth in there for you, and some jute fibre that I painstakingly uh, 
thing out. So if you want to take one of those home each, you're welcome to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yeah. So you see the smoke coming out of it oh, now. Yes. Yeah, see the smoke coming out the chimney? See if yeah. I can pull it out so you can yeah, see yeah. it. Yeah? Yeah. 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 So now that's actually that's not 100 percent closed. Okay. Um, so that's the moisture and the and the, the char cloth burning off. Sometimes if you get it if you get it a bit hot, you might get a flame, like a like a big soup coming out. Don't worry about that, it's not not a big deal. Smoke is flammable, so sometimes the smoke burns. There you go. Ah. Yeah, sometimes the flame gets down the smoke and it gets in there, it's fine. So we just sit there and we just wait until that stops burning. Once it's run out of something to burn, it, it's done. It's all, it's all charred. Yeah. So does that, does that mean that we can't use that one because it's burned on the inside? What do you mean, sorry? That one. Um, that one? Yeah, yeah, you can use it. No, it's fine. So once it's burned out, but doesn't it mean that the actual um, uh, plaster thing would have burned? No, not at all. Well, that, well yes, yeah, because that, but that's what we want. Right. We're trying to burn it, but minimising the amount of oxygen that can, that can burn it. So if I pull that out... Oh, okay. Oh, I understand. <laughs> yeah, if so I pull out. This is, this is going to be... This may burst into flames because I pulled this out a bit early. But just to show you... There you go. Yeah, there, there you go. Look, it's, it's, let's see it glowing. I pulled it out way too early. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, what you would do is don't pull it out and don't open it up too quickly because you get the, let the oxygen get in there and then it, it bursts into flames. Okay. So, um, so, is this so I would have just pulled that out and just left it by the edge of the fire till it cooled enough that I could open it with my bare hands, and that would have been enough there. Yeah. So can we still use that one then or not? This one, not any. This this material, no, because it's it's currently burning. Okay. It's on fire now, so that will burn away in a second. Oh, right. You'll see, look, it's on fire. Look. That's just because the oxygen's got to it. Yes, because I opened the tin too quickly, but there's only because I was just trying to show you rather than wait. But yeah, triangular bandages. But I've done it with, I've done it with socks, tea towels. Yes, sweet pea. <gasps> look at that mushroom. It's beautiful, isn't it? I want to put it in the fire. Yes, yeah. you need to go wash your hands, please. Shall I give you some stuff to wash your hands with? I've got some special stuff. I'll give that to you. <laughs> you know what we call that mushroom? <laughs> Wash the hands straight away. Yeah, don't touch your face. <laughs> white in, in the mushroom world, white bad. Oh, right. Wow, that's good. Well done for asking then, Emma. You're going to be interesting first day in the fun fight, the, the fun stuff. Look, watch this. Look, watch. Whoa. It's the good stuff. Rub your hands together then. Rub them on your hands. Surgical spirit, right, that's what that is. Yeah, he's going to finish doing what, what he was doing. Yo. There was a big mouth chunk so, uh, inside of it. <laughs> it's sunny, but it's, it's cold. Like, there's a lot of cold breeze coming from behind my head, so yeah, you wouldn't yeah, think absolutely. it's yeah. as cold as it is, considering how knickers. sunny it is. Uh, old knickers, um, mushrooms. You can charm. You can charm oh, mushrooms. Charm. All you're doing is baking the moisture out of something. Mm. That's all you're doing. Mm. Yeah. You can do it. With, it's how they do it. That's how they make stick um, charcoal sticks for art. They just take loads of really thin sticks and just bake them. So these, these two ladies here are specialists in dehydrating food because they've been learning and practicing it. So a lot of the stuff we're dehydrating is probably very flammable because it doesn't contain moisture. Uh, yeah, potentially. Yeah, I mean, I think you you also, it's not just the moisture you're removing, you're also carbonizing it and it's the carbon that you want. Um, that's why it goes black, because yeah. carbon is black. So um, that's what you're after. You're, you're burning off everything that isn't necessary and leaving only, because everything is made of carbon. Everything is made of carbon. You're made of carbon, the floor's made of carbon, that dog's made of carbon, that's made of carbon. Everything has got a basis in carbon. Yeah. So um, we're just removing everything but the carbon and leaving that behind. Because carbon is like one of the strongest materials. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Cool. Everybody happy with that so far? Yes. Who would like to have a go at lighting their own fire and getting an actual fire lit? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so what I want you to do is you need to collect, and you can go anywhere in the forest. The forest is basically a big circle. So if you go that way down and just stick to the path, you will eventually end up back here. Okay, just keep following the path. But you need to go off and you need to find yourself several handfuls of matchstick thin sticks. Length, as long as you like. 
up, uh, shoulder to finger is probably a good length, and then we can break them down in half. Elbow to fingertip is, but don't get one stick and then break it up into loads of little kind of teeny tiny bits. It's no good to you. But you want handfuls of the thinnest sticks you can find. Snapping them off a tree, no good to you. Yeah, because it's alive. Stuff from the ground, stuff that maybe is dead. There are plenty of dead trees along the hedgerow. Plenty of dead trees. Dead grass. No, thank you. Doesn't work. Just char, it melts and then it just disappears. You want sticks. Yeah, all... really great idea. Everybody gets the same thing. You know, everybody gets the same so we've money. gathered some sticks, some dry sticks yeah. off the ground. We've made a base. We've covered um, cotton wool in Vaseline. We're now going to use this thing. What it, uh, this, I can't remember what it's called. To start, off, make a spark. And then we're going to put these sticks on top. It's all going to flow really nicely. It's all going to work out perfectly. Wow, first time. Just like that. That's how we do it, mate. And then we put these twigs here. Like this. And we stick that there. Well done. Straight away. The world does go to pot. You're going to, be, you're going to have to do this. <laughs> you're very good at that. Start to rise it's in the ages. Do you think it's too much? Do you think maybe we should take some of it off until we've actually got it lit? There's enough air. I think the sticks are too thin, too thick. I reckon it might be too much too soon. But if it's working, it's working. I think we need to get the little ones lit first. Yeah. Before we put the big ones on. Because nothing's, nothing's caught fire except for the cotton wool at the moment. Yeah. But it will though, there's enough air. It's getting there. Um, over there on the sides. Um, where, the, where the kid is. Oh, there you go. It's doing it. Well done, straight away. You should be real proud. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit. Not yeah. That was really good. What's going on? Is it? Yeah. Huh? Mm, she's got it. Yeah. I was wondering how to do the meat. I tend to do it in Jersey a lot. It has a big slice of the meat in it. It's so good. Woo! It says to put in a few different things. Okay. Now you want to put the little, little ones on top. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. So, like that way, it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. <laughs> We can survive, you know. We know what we're doing. Hold on. Yeah. It's like people, really, though, isn't it? Oh, it's not often I get such a